Oh, it is windy up here. Yep, I'm here to kick on and kick off, so we must have a leak of some sort. Yeah, she's pretty low. That's pretty up there. From what I'm seeing, and they just need a new evaporator. This thing is... This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, so we got to say a walk-in freezer that's supposedly not working right. Let's go take a peek, see what we got. Yeah, that's nice. Master built. Looks like it's just reading 10. Let's see uh, what's going on. Supposedly it's 404A from what I'm seeing there. Let's uh, probably go up on the roof and see if we got a solid sight glass. I have not been to this location yet, but it's got the same sensors and all that, even though it's master built. I don't, I'm assuming it's probably similar to a, a beacon system. Let's go up on the roof and gotta figure out where that's at. So there it is. Oh, it is windy up here. Yep, I'm here to kick on and kick off, so we must have a leak of some sort. That ain't good. Short cycle, baby. Well, you can tell this is our freezer because it has the liquid injection there. Let's see if this one's the one that shuts down. It's probably getting down there. Here is the sight glass. Yeah, she's pretty low. Yep, she's pretty low, and that's what it's doing. It's going to end up pumping that oil right out of it. Yeah, that's it. And we put them both on the same... Well, ain't that about ignorant. Why would you put them both on the same disconnect? That's, that is absolutely asinine. Look at all the uh, cleaner that they've gotten into the fan blades there. Look how many motors they've lost because they got cleaner in them like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna start looking for a leak. Um, obviously, it's got one somewhere. Somebody said something about possibly a condenser having a leak. I'm going to guesstimate that this fine piece of machinery here has two loops and one coil. Do we have any oil out here? Don't see any oil. Well, it's super windy today, so if it's up here on the roof, may not be able to find it. I got my ultrasonic. We'll try that, I guess, if that's what it takes, I guess. All right, let's see if we get a hit when we go in the door here. You would think that would go off as we go in this room. Nice. We'll kind of give this thing an old lucky look and see what we can find here on it. It would be nice if it's down here in one of the fittings right on the end of the coil. But we'll scan it over and... Oh, go. Yeah, lucky there. That's not good, is it? Well, let's see what kind of parts per million it comes in, because that'll tell me whether it's just a itty-bitty one or if it's a big one. Yeah, that ain't good. All right, you ready for this? Going right up there in that corner, which is going to be closest to your TXV and all that. Five hundred, six hundred, seven. We're just leaving it there for a minute to where it stops, and then we'll pull back and see if it comes up or down as I get closer to myself. That's pretty up there. Come my way a little bit. Oh, it's getting higher. That's not good. Much higher. Come a little bit more. Hey, boy, that's really high. That's that's a pretty bad leak. Come back in for another bite. Unless it's leaking on the end. Hopefully it's leaking on the end and we can just fix that real quick. We're in the 700s here. So it's going down as I get closer to me. Well, with this cover off, maybe it was starting to dissipate now. Yeah, nowhere near the vicinity of what we had before. I'm gonna go grab my torch, warm that up, and we'll spray it. I downloaded the manual, or at least it looks like the manual. It said to hold PB1, which this one just says switch one, so we held it for the five seconds. It says PD for probably pump down. 
and we're hoping that it's going to go into the defrost. Um, this does have electric defrost. The one this one here is talking about has a reversing valve. I could not get anything to bubble even when I warmed it up some, but since we've got wires in there, I don't want to get too crazy with the torch. So I'm just going to see if I can get it to go into a, a defrost and then uh, that'll warm it up and that'll also make it easier to find our leak. It did work. It pumped down, it shot the fans, and it just said DF, which would be defrost. Kind of interesting how they bring it all the way over to here, nice and far over to this area where it can melt all this nastiness out. Wish more of them did it like that. Now, unfortunately, I'm not getting any hits because obviously it pumped down. That's the only downside. Now what I did do is pulled the evaporator sensor out, which is how it's gonna determine when to shut down out of the coil. That way it doesn't shut off, at, I'm assuming probably 45 to 55 degrees. So it'll get that coil nice and warm. Once it eventually gets out of defrost, I'm gonna go up there and kill power to it and allow the refrigerant to come back down. And then we'll go through and see if we can scan it again. Cause like right now, it's probably got less than a pound or two pressure on it. And now I'm not getting dilly squat. You can see the heat going across the ceiling there. 19 is technically what this sensor here is. I think we're just about pretty well done with this thing. I'm gonna stick it back in there and that way it'll shut off and then we can kill power to it. And that way we can get some pressure in here to have it trigger. I believe it was right there. What's it reading on that? Yeah, look at that. She's zooming right on up there, 40. And she should release here in a second. 65 would be the highest I would have figured. Should hear the little expansion valve open up because that's your solenoid. It's gonna have a um, drip time now, a couple minutes to potentially five. It just released. We should start picking something up here real quick. Yep, we're already getting stuff, there we go. All right, let's go shut that off and then we might go spray it before it gets too cold. Turned it back on, went upstairs, listened to it flow, and I've sprayed it down. I might have seen a little something around one of the uh, metal to the elbow, but not to the extent that it should be as strong as what it is. I believe it's in the coil, and if it's in the coil, I'm not digging in there. From what I'm seeing, and they just need a new evaporator. This thing is pretty well... I bet you this is the original one, and I think this store's been here for a long time. I've completely drenched this thing with soap. And it's, I even ran it underneath the water because to get it warmed up because it was for freezing in the uh, spigot of my sprayer. But I've got all of the joints, the outward back corners, all the way in the, uh, every little square inch of everything I can get that I would be able to fix. Up here was one of the stronger ones. I think it might be potentially on the other side, but it's not where I'm at. And to dig in there, I don't see the point. It's it's just time to replace it. All right, so depending on where I'm at, you go in an inch or two into the coil and it gets tall or it gets higher. And we're getting higher and higher. So it's not just right at the very edge. And we're getting higher. So the, P the PPM works really good. Like here I am going closer to the outside where you would think it'd be easy to fix. It went lower. That's good enough for me. I'm not gonna tear the whole coil apart trying to fix it. It's time to buy a new one. Uh, I'm gonna give them a call and see what they want me to do. I, they don't really have a lot of options other than bringing a semi uh, to unload it all. Otherwise, uh, that's where we're at. I just got done scanning all around up in here, around the face of the coil, in the fan blades here getting nothing. I mean, it is super, super windy out here, but I want to just protect myself against a catastrophic leak that'd be out here that I don't know about. And I'm getting nothing. So at this point, I got to call them and tell them what's going on, see what they want to do. Like I said, they're probably going to just juice it up, but I don't know how long it's going to last. That's a pretty strong signal. They gave me the okay to go ahead and recharge it. They're going to talk to whoever and then decide if they want to have us replace it or whatever so at this point that's where we're at we're going to go ahead and get it running there's really not a whole lot of options you got food on the line and uh that's just what we got to do we'll go ahead and go on our charging scale here which is awesome so convenient to not have to use your phone if you don't want to go down here and go to refrigerant charging manual should find it here in a second as soon as it gets the green there's the T560, 472. There it is. It completely connected. We'll zero that turret out. There we go. 
Man, I'll tell you what, these 5.57s, I have been really, really, really happy with them. I was not as happy with my 5.50s, my old ones. These ones here really, really have been good. I've been really happy with them. Of course, my first 5.57s also were really good too. I mean, they lasted quite a while. Yeah, it's already kicking out. I hate that I don't charge too fast, but darn it, I'm not gonna have to. So you gotta keep on short cycle. And the refrigerant's just gonna be there anyhow. Yeah, jeez. I can't believe it doesn't have any type of timer to shut it down once it triggers. It probably did back in the day, but it doesn't anymore. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, that side glass is almost completely empty. There's a little something. I don't see a headmaster on this at all. That's kind of crazy. Well, they must be able to do that with electronic TXP, pretty much the same as the bone miser does. It's starting to fill it pretty quick, actually. I'm pretty surprised. Granted, we're dumping it in awfully fast. I mean, that's way faster than I normally would do it, but I feel like, what's the point of sitting or short cycling it over and over? I mean, there's definitely a lot of things this thing could use, and uh, I told him, I said, the compressor is an 06 on it. Uh, that one there, looks like that was changed in 09. I bet you the equipment is a lot older than that. What do we got here? Um, see if we can make it out on the serial number. 97 is about what I bet you this thing was built. About bet you. I think it was about 97 area they did this. Right about the eight and a half mark, we finally hit solid. I'm gonna go ahead and probably add about a two extra pounds, pound and a half, something like that. Then uh, we'll wait and see where we're at. The other one, at least it's staying full. That's your cooler. It, it don't look horrible shape, but I mean, it's just... <sighs> How long until the coils start leaking up here? Our freezer is already at five. Had a seal that was going out. I think it's better than the door. It doesn't have a seal, then the door doesn't shut. All right, what do we got? Three degrees there. All the fans are running, everything's picked back up. We're good to go there. Oh, good thing I came back because I would have forgot my AccuTrack, which I don't have a battery for. I was going to check it with that. Uh, that would have probably done good, but either way, it's it's done. You know, there's just nothing more you can do with it. I gave it the, everything I got to try to make sure I verified what the leak was at, and uh, just not seeing uh, any way to fix it without completely destroying the coil. And, you know, right now it's 5.30. So, I mean, I stayed uh, a lot later than normal trying to get them going. So, he did what he can do. So, anyhow, until next time, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.